Welcome back, beautiful people. It's Dave Knoll here with Off Grid Living with Dave Knoll. I have a special guest today. Her name is Stella. She is back in action. And of course, like always, Big Elmer. As you can tell, oh, I've been hard away slaving in the kitchen. I have just flour all in my hair and all over my face. Oh, what a day. So I went out to the uh, chicken coop today to grab a few eggs. I was going to have some eggs and toast. And the eggs were there like usual. Very predictable. Very, uh, very nice. When I came in, I opened the cupboard door, no bread. I'm like, oh, what a waste. How can I do this? This is no good. So you know what? It's time for me to take a day. Today's Sunday. I got to take the day and I have to make some bread. I got to stock up on my stuff here. So I've had a lot of requests to see my my clay brick um, homemade oven in use. I showed the video on how I made it and how I prepared it and all that stuff and how I cured it and fired it. But now it's, it's time to be in action. I want to show everybody that... Uh, that it really works and there is enough room to get um, uh, bread pans in there. So the mosquitoes are bad and I got flour in my face. But there is room in there to get bread pans in there. So we're going to get started. Um, sorry it's been a while since I posted uh, posted videos. It's been a very, very busy summer. Um, I just had my amazing son for a week. It was a great week. Um, and I wanted to just focus on us and, uh, and have a good time, which we did. But um, it's just been a very busy summer. So now things are starting to wind down a little bit. I'll be able to uh, to focus a little bit more on my channel and get myself uh, back on track. But thanks for tuning in. We're going to get this going. I'll get my tripod set up so we can uh, go step by step through this, this cool process. All right? Because I'm hungry. All right. <laughs> some bread everybody so here we are and I have to tell you I have many fun things I like to do on the homestead provide myself with food but this is I would say top five I love bread um, consume a lot of bread I like pretty much bread in everything with every meal I like to eat bread which you can tell from right here and right there that's where it seems to go now that I'm 41 years old years young um, that's where my bread likes to sit um, yeah so let's get started so the first thing that I do is I just take a little pot and I set this in here right in here and I warm up my water I get uh, two cups of water just nice and warm not not boiling you don't want it to boil and then I add about uh, I'm gonna be making about I guess three good loaves today three or four good loaves um, so I did a double recipe, I doubled up on everything. So I have two cups of water, a tablespoon and a half of uh, quick rise yeast, Fleischmann's uh, quick rise yeast. And then you put that in with your warm water and you let it activate. That'll activate up and that'll be ready to go um, in just a minute. Then I take six cups of flour. So I have my six cups of flour already sitting here in this bowl. I take just a little bit of oil. Um, some recipes you can you know, melt down butter and, and that sort of thing. I just use a very small amount of oil just for uh, additional moisture in my bread. So I add that in. Um, I'm not a big fan of adding lots of sugars and stuff to my bread, uh, just for health reasons, but I will add a little bit of salt. Not much, probably about a teaspoon and a half. And that's it. I don't want it to taste salty. I've had a lot of bread before, um, especially in restaurants where it's uh, it's very, very salty, very pungent. Okay, so I have that in. my um, I have my yeast and water mixture. Now I'm going to add that right into my flour. Ooh, skeeties are out today. It's been very, very nice up here. Um, we do have a lot of forest fires going on right now, which I'm very comfortable having a fire in a uh, in a nice closed pit like this. So I only have to have a real open flame for about an hour because I want to get that oven nice and hot. So I just keep, I added about 20 pieces to this just to get a nice bed of coals. It'll warm up that clay. And then I put on um, the metal covering that acts as the uh, kind of the oven enclosure for this process. 
but it works so good like this little oven took me two days to build it to build the bricks dig the clay out of the back and uh, even my little fire pit there for roasting marshmallows and having campfires at night and stuff it works extremely well and the more that I fire this thing up the harder the clay gets it uh, it's worked re I'm really impressed with it it's really nice time to get dirty so we're just gonna mix all this together and get a real nice Real nice dough going in here. I think this is my favorite part. Getting this stuff all over me. The dogs are, uh, dogs are feeling the flies this time of year. It's like the second round of really bad mosquitoes have came out here in Northern Ontario, as well as the, uh, the blow flies. The blow flies this year are crazy bad. Um, but we've had an extremely moist and extremely wet, uh, wet summer up here. So yeah, you just mix and you can tell, I get lots on my hands, just love it. And if I find at this point, you know, it's a little bit too dry, I'll add a little bit of oil. But I kind of love this too, because I do a lot of bush crafting and I like to go in the bush, you know, for overnighters and try and uh, supply myself with as much as I can in the bush while I'm there. But I mean, usually, especially winter camping, um, during the day when you're out there, you know, if you're not fishing, there's not a whole lot going on. I'll bring the stuff to make bread, but I'll just bring the flour and the water. Then I'll just make like a, a really traditional uh, bread. Um, but if you find that this bread, see, I have a little bit extra flour in the bottom, which is awesome, because I'll have that to... Uh, to put on my breadboard after to knead this out but if you find it's a little dry just put a little bit more oil in it a little bit of oil or a little bit of water i like a dense bread um i'm not one to have that bread but you cut with the knife and it pushes like down to the cutting board i'm not a big fan of that fluffy bread I like a dense, dense, dense bread. You know, something that I can pull straight out and put a piece of meat on or put a few eggs on and it's going to, uh, it's gonna hold up. So yeah, like I said, I just had my, uh, my amazing son for a week. He came up, we did lots of fun stuff. We made uh, a really cool um, figure four deadfall trap for mice um works really good we went down to the river we had a had an amazing time you know because last year with the COVID thing it was it was pretty scary and you know i guess it still is but it's kind of nice to see things progressively coming back to back to normal and i hope wherever you guys are and ladies that it's uh it's coming back to normal somewhat as well but yeah crazy time so I have this bread almost to where I want it. So what I'm going to do now is because that yeast is in there, right? It's still working. It's still activating. Um, this is time for the bread to rise. So that recipe that I use is almost always dead on for the water flour mix. So I have this really awesome, awesome ball of dough. So yeah, so for this particular recipe, if you wanna, if you wanna get like four or five really big loaves, um, this is the recipe to use. This is just a traditional white bread recipe, so it's uh, unbleached flour, all-purpose flour, Fleischmann's yeast, a little bit of uh, vegetable oil, or melted butter, clarified butter, um, and then your water. So you just put your, like I said. Put your yeast, about a tablespoon and a half, in two cups of water, of warm water. Let it sit, it'll start to activate, it'll start to puff up, and it'll start to smell like bread. Um, yeah, six cups of flour, maybe a tablespoon or so of salt. If you want to add sugar, feel free to add sugar. But for my particular application, like I said, I like a dense bread. So look at that. Perfect dough. 
Now I have to let it rise. Now we're in the rising process. So now what you want to do to let it rise is you want to keep it, this is going to actually create a little bit of heat because of that yeast. Keep my flour in the bottom because I'm going to need that after. So I just set my loaf right in there. Scrape off my loaf, my dough. Just take a little bit of plastic wrap and you want to cover Cover your bowl like this. And this is the rising stage. This is the proofing stage. This is when that bread will generally puff up and come right out of the bowl. I just kind of wrap it. Pretty tight. You don't want any you don't want any air to get out all that heat in there and I'm a one proof kind of guy I only proof this once um, some people if they like a fluffier bread they'll let it proof and rise up and then they'll pound it they'll get the air out of it and then they'll let it rise up again um, pound it put it in the pans let it rise more and then bake it I don't want that um, I have a small enclosure in there I don't want my bread proofy touch in the top and like I said before I like small compact loaves that I can take with me throw in my backpack and I like a good dense bread really dense bread it's just my my personal preference so i'm only going to let it proof the one time put it in the pans and then get it in the oven and get it cooking okay so the bowl is all wrapped up that dough is going to rise it's going to put a little uh a little tea towel over top and we'll let that sit for about half an hour and by then I'm gonna have a nice bed of coals in there. My oven's gonna get uh, really hot. I'm actually gonna throw my shroud on right now. I'll show you what I do. So now that I have a pretty decent bed of coal, I throw this heat shroud on. And all that it is is a piece of duct work. But this is what creates that, kind of that, uh, that oven inside here. So what this will do by putting this on, you'll heat up all the clay on the top there, the oven portion. And uh, I'll just pop that off, throw my bread pans in there with my bread in, inside, and it'll be nice and warm. This clay has actually stayed quite warm for up to, uh, I've noticed, two, three hours after, after I've let the fire completely burn out. It has a lot of res residual heat in that clay. It's really great. Okay, well, I'm going to let this bread rise and clean up a little bit. Be right back. We're back. Bread time. It's time to go. Check out my bread. So it's raised. It's rised. I can actually feel the heat in the bowl. It's rised to about double of where it was in about half an hour. So that's pretty awesome. So basically now we're ready to roll. I've pre-greased my bread pans, so I put a little bit of vegetable oil in the bottom of my pans. Oh, look at this. This is nice. So now, what I'm going to do, punch the air out of that. So it's risen, filling up with air from the activation of the yeast. And that's what's going to give me that really nice, dense, dense, dense bread. Really, oh yeah, look at that. Good amount today. Spread out a little bit of flour on my board. So nothing sticks. Oh, that's some nice dough. That's some nice dough, folks. So I'm going to cut this into three pieces. And get this into my pan. I'm just going to get all that air out. Because like I said previously, I like dense bread. I know I've said that a lot. I'm repeating. 
I am repeating myself. Pull this bread apart a little bit. Oh, for that dough? That's wicked. That is really nice dough. Very nice dough. I'm gonna make a little square like this. So it's kind of uniform. Get off. Lightly greased pans. I'm going to cut this piece into. Uh, I don't know what that was. Oh well. Cut this into three equal pieces. Like so. Stretch it out just a little bit. Plop it right into your pan. Look at that. And then I want it to cook fairly evenly, so I'll just kind of spread my uh, my dough out a little bit in the bottom of the pan. Push it down. Because I'm cooking over an open flame as well, an open coals. Um, I want it to be as evenly distributed as possible so it cooks uh, cooks evenly. Now, what I like to do, just as an added, cooking in nature, eh? There's always something in the pan. Always. Hair, stick, bug, something. But I just love it so much. It's nothing like cooking outside, you know? Cooking outside, feeling free, feeling happy. Okay. So, as you can tell, things are looking good. I went to the garden, I grew chives this year. So I have some really nice fresh chives. What I'm gonna do. up some fresh chai and that's the one fun thing with bread is you can be as creative as you'd like to be you know the dog loves chai too she must be you can be as creative as you want sometimes I'll take like a Montreal steak spice or a steak blend and put it on top Push that in there. Those nice little pieces. You can dry out your own wild edibles too. Berries. Anything you have, make like a bannock. Like an oil fried uh, bread. I have some dehydrated garlic, which I like to have um, around here, especially in the winter time, just so I know I'm getting my garlic. Just take it. Just adds a really nice flavor. Um, and it, a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. You know? I usually take a little Ziploc bag of this stuff with me in the bush too. If I'm going for an overnighter or a, a camping trip. Just so I can kind of sprinkle it on what I'm eating. Just gives it that nice kind of tangy, rooty flavor that I like. Push that right into my dough. Dough is still rising, rising nice and fast, which is perfect. A little bit of garlic, a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. I've made a pretty salty loaf before, which I, I loved it. I mean, as I get older, my taste buds I think are getting a little more dull, but the kids hate it. Didn't like that. Super salty. There we have it. These are ready for the oven. These are ready for the oven.
are ready to roll. Shake off a little bit of the ash. I don't mind a bit of ash in my in my bread, but not a lot. baking rack on this ledge here as you can tell creates a little bit of a barrier a little bit of a not a barrier a bit of a gap so the air and the hot air can get up and circulate around nicely and not burn the bottom did pizzas on this pizzas on this a few weeks ago it was amazing it tasted so good so i'm going to put my heat shroud back over top like so that's going to lock in all that heat. Still is scrounging like usual. And I'll show you back here. So. Big ugly face. Come back here. You can see I can uh, actually inspect my loaf. Anything I'm cooking from back here. And that's where that's where the uh, fire exhaust. Okay, beautiful folks. Sorry, stuck in a tree. <laughs> um, be back in half hour. We're gonna get this out of there, butter it up, and have some bread for breakfast, some eggs. Okay, be back in a minute. Well, I think it's time to see what we've got. It's been about half an hour. The flames were cooking pretty good. It got really hot really fast and then died out. And then I threw a couple of wet pieces of birch in the bottom and I've been letting the smoke just kind of billow in around that. That'll give it a really nice smoky flavor to that bread. Might not be everybody's preference, but for me, the more natural it tastes and uh, earthy it tastes, the better. It's great. Let's see where we're at. I checked it about 10 minutes ago and it was looking pretty close. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now I'm sure if there was a classification for this, it would be considered artisan bread. But to me, it is a work of art. Look at this. How gorgeous this looks. Let's have a look. Let's see how we did this time. And this is something that it was, when it's in your cupboard, you know, the kids can't get enough. They're always asking for it. They always want it because they know, you know, that it was made, uh, made a little differently, tastes a little differently. Let's see what we've got. Hi, she's warm. Look at these nice, these nice little loaves. Golden brown on the bottom. Nicely, nice on the top, still nice and soft. It's wonderful. Let's cut this baby open. Oh. oh, that's the ticket. Look at this. Look at this. Just perfect. Just perfect all the way through. Well, folks, I have to tell you, this was a nice way to spend my Sunday morning. Get up, make a little homemade bread. We gotta get the butter on this while it's still warm. And finally get a chance to eat. So thanks a lot for tuning in. It's really nice to, uh, to be back and creating content and, and sharing my kind of crazy fun life with everybody um but yeah it's been a great summer i'm going to show you guys another video on this this winter how i make it on the wood stove in the house and that's that's even simpler than this i mean this took an hour start to finish yeah you got to build the stove and whatever but you can make it on the barbecue you can make it wherever you want but for me this is uh this kind of the epitome of off-grid living you know it just cost me a quarter to make this bread and you know, an hour of time and I'm going to enjoy uh, this bread for the next, uh, probably the next two weeks. So thanks a lot for tuning in. I'm going to get my eggs cooking. 
go and see how my chickens are doing. And once again, I really appreciate your support and thanks for tuning in. If you like my channel, feel feel free to subscribe. Um, and uh, and that way you'll you'll see the notifications. If you hit your notification bell, um, it'll tell you when I have a new video up and you can watch it. Feel free to, uh, to comment and I'll be getting back to you shortly. Have a great day um, and I'll try and get another video out this week. Okay, take care. Bye for now.